Hello amiable viewers and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On today's programme, we present the conclusion of a three-part series featuring Sonia Fitzpatrick, one of the most widely recognised and respected telepathic animal communicators in the world. She has worked with clients from around the globe, including Hollywood actress Tori Spelling and vegan talk show host and actress Ellen DeGeneres and is the author of several popular books including What the Animals Tell Me and Cat Talk, The Secret of Communicating with Your Cat. Miss Fitzpatrick also hosts a weekly call-in radio show called Animal Intuition on Sirius Satellite Radio and previously hosted a series on the television channel Animal Planet called The Pet Psychic. The UK-born Miss Fitzpatrick currently lives in Texas, USA with five dog and 12 cat companions as well as a family of frogs. Why I love working with animals is because they don't carry any baggage and they're very honest and they're very straight. They're not complicated. You know, human beings complicate everything, don't they, at times, yes. some of them. Animals don't. They're just wonderful to work with, always have love, they're always honest, and I much prefer working with animals than... <laughs> <laughs> Let us now hear about the emotional lives of animals from Sonia Fitzpatrick. For example, do animals experience grief in the same way we do? The thing is, they feel it stronger than people do. They have very strong emotions. Mm. And when a dog dies, when an animal dies in the house, the other animals grieve. They're grieving. They miss that animal. They miss the, the animal being around just like the human does. It takes them time and sometimes they never get over it. Do the animals sometimes get frustrated with their yes. human companion? Sometimes. They get depressed. Mm -hmm. And um, the frustration sometimes comes out in different ways. You know, with birds, they'll peck their feathers out and they haven't got another anyone to talk to. And if you get a kitten, get two cats, not one. They've always got company for each other yes. and they've always got each other to be with. But if you get an only cat and then you suddenly leave it for hours and hours on end, and they get depressed, they get frustrated. They, get, they don't understand why and being left. Or you have a dog and you just suddenly put it out in the yard and it, it never has any interaction. It's so hard and cruel to do that to an animal. You know, I always say to people, put yourself in your animal's body and see how you'd feel. That's the best way you can do it. Yes. How would you feel if they, this week you were in a cage all day? You know, some people go out and leave their animal in a tiny cage all day. Miss Fitzpatrick can converse inside with amphibians and reptiles as well. She rescued some frog friends she discovered languishing away in a retail store and has a wonderful relationship with them. They were suffocating and it's in a little container because so many of them were dead. And so I gently got the ones that were alive, put them on the car, got a big um, tank and a pump, because they need to live, you know, not just in a jar, they'll die in a jar, they need oxygen. And um, I'm coming through the checkouts and the woman said to me, oh, you don't want to take those, they're nearly dead. And I just looked at her and I said to her, that is why I'm taking them. I'm hoping that they're going to survive. No. And now I've had them seven years, and they're a big part of my family, they live in my kitchen. I talk to them every morning <laughs> and uh, they are intelligent and they have great love for each other. I mean, I've, they've taught me a lot since I've had them because I've never lived with frogs so close before. I'd always loved frogs outside, but I'd never actually lived with these frogs and they came into my life and they're as very important to me now. They love each other. They under, I talk to them and they come up 
and I, they, they look at me, you know, and they mm. know when the food's going in. And sometimes I'll perhaps be rushing around and I haven't always given fed them. You don't have to feed them every day. And sometimes if I don't feed them every day, they get upset about it. And I'll hear them telling me in my shower, we need food, so I will come and give them food. So, yes. But when I'm living with the animals, I'm usually watching TV. They're watching TV with me. And they understand a lot of TV too. Your emotions and your feelings are going up when you're watching the films. And they understand it. Do you think um, being vegetarian or vegan, that that's helpful in I communicating with, with animals? That, yes. De eating meat is dead meat. It's dead flesh. It holds you down. Spiritually, it holds you down. Yes. And I honestly believe that I wouldn't be as accurate and as good as what I do. I always say to people, it is not I that do this. I mm. receive and transmit. I receive the animal's language. I can't take credit for that. It's just that I find that by not eating meat, that I'm lighter. To me, there's no difference between eating a cat to me than eating a cow. How do they help humanity, the well, animals? All the time we see animals going into um, nursing homes and they're helping people. They make people feel joyful when they stroke an animal. Their blood pressure goes down. They say people that have animals, their blood pressure is lower than people that don't have animals. So you feel the love. They're putting love out all the time and they teach people to love. I think that's the incredible thing. People love their animals, some people love their animals with a passion. They love them more than any other human being. And so therefore, they teach us how to love. They're constantly putting out love and we feel love for them. So I think that's a very important thing, the fact that animals do teach us love because that's what the universe wants. I mean, the Beatles wrote that song, all the world needs now is love, love. sweet love. And that's exactly right. That's the message that they give to me, mm -hmm. to the world. Love. love is the most important love thing. That's the message from the animals that they give out. Mm -hmm. Love is the most important thing, and it is. What can we do to help the animals? If we see an animal in distress, get out, do something and help it. You know, that's what we can do. You see a dog walking along a road or a cat in distress, help it. If you see a wild animal in distress, there are all these wonderful places that people run and work with possums and raccoons and, mm -hmm. you know, you can get them to a, a, a facility where they can be helped if they're injured or a bird has a wing that's broken. I picked a bird up once. I, it was a big pelican, actually, pelican-type bird. And it had a fishing hook in its actual wing. So we, we, we went up and we threw a blanket over it and we held on to its beak so it couldn't bite. <laughs> And I took it in the garage and I had this chair with a wire, with like an iron back. And he sat there all night. And the next morning we phoned up the bird sanctuary and we told them, could we come in? They said, yes. They mended that bird's wing. They found out where I'd picked the bird up. They brought it back and they let it go. Wow. And I was walking my dogs the next day and that bird circled around me, very just over my head and thanked me and went away. That's wow. how intelligent and how much they know. I always say that's what feeds people's souls when they do something for an animal or they do something for a human being. It makes you feel so good. Wonderful feeling. Love is the most important thing in the universe. Love for each other, love for the animals, love for the environment, love for everything. In a February 2005 gathering of our association members in Hungary, Supreme Master Ching Hai discussed an episode of Sonia Fitzpatrick's program, The Peck Psychic. She had viewed where Miss Fitzpatrick explained why a dog was not well. The animal world is fascinating, fascinating. If you can talk to the animal, they tell you a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, there was one show in America when I was there. There was a psychic, dog, uh, animal psychics. You can talk to dog, uh, dogs or other animal, yeah. And it was a live show, eh? They bring different dogs there. And then one time, she was telling the owner was asking why his dogs been sick and and you know like uh, tired and no active anymore, and the doctor don't know what's wrong. 
So the psychic concentrated and talked to the dog. And then she said that, your dog tell you that because you use all this chemical to clean the house, so he cannot bear it and he's sick. So he beg you not to clean with the chemical anymore. And at that moment, that dog go and put the paw into her hand, you know, like shake hand. Then that dog never know her before, né? He come to her and then put the paw on, on, on her arm. And so it was very touching. And the dog come to her and put the paw on her arm, you know, hand like that. And, and then, oh, that was very touching. At the moment she finished the sentence, she, he come and do that. And it's so obvious, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he, yeah, he was so happy. Many thanks to you, Sonia Fitzpatrick, for sharing these fascinating insights about the inner lives of our animal co-inhabitants. Your work builds a bridge of better understanding between us and our animal friends, helping to create greater peace and harmony in our world. May heaven forever bless you and all the animals. For more information on Sonia Fitzpatrick, please visit www.soniafitzpatrick.com or follow her on www.facebook.com. Books by Miss Fitzpatrick are available at www.amazon.com. I'm Sonia Fitzpatrick. Be big, go green to save the planet. Thank you, tender-hearted viewers, for your company today on Animal World, our co-inhabitants. May all beings know true happiness in a vibrant, vegan world. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash aw.